Hey, how's it going? Welcome to episode four of Let's Build a Drum Machine in Ember. So this is what we're going to be building. And here's where we are at the moment. In the last episode, we were working on the controls component, um, uh, showing the section of song that we're currently in. So we can see we can step through. These are 16s. These are bars. Sorry, these are beats and these are bars. Um, so I think the what we'll try to do today is to finish out a play and a stop button and maybe also um, we'll have the individual steps light up like they're doing here. Okay, so um, the first thing is we have a playback service which we worked on last week. So we're going to test drive this. Okay. So our drum machine is going to have a heartbeat and that is going to trigger every certain number of milliseconds based on the tempo of the song. Um, each time it triggers, we'll move the song along, play each step one by one. And if there are any songs in that step, we'll send them to the sound service to actually uh, trigger that audio. Um, but let's start with the actual heartbeat. So I'm going to test drive this and we'll call this thing uh, tick interval. So create a service. So the interval is going to be uh, calculated based on the tempo of the song. So let's set the song on the service. The song has a tempo of 60, meaning that there'll be one beat per second. There are four 16ths in a beat, 16 16ths in a bar. Um, so we would expect that the interval will be 250 milliseconds. Okay, so as expected, it fails. So let's build a tick interval computer property. So it's going to depend on the song tempo. So the beats per second is going to be the tempo divided by 60. So in a song that is uh, that has a tempo of 60 beats per uh, minute, there will be a single beat per second. So there are four sixteenths in a beat. So at sixteenths per second, is the beats per second by four. And then finally, the interval is how many of those uh, are in a second or a thousand milliseconds divided by sixteenths per second, which should be per second. Okay. So, so if we did that right, uh, the test pass, cool. So if I create a, uh, if, so if I update the song to be a tempo of 120, uh, which is twice as fast, we'd expect the interval to half. So that should be one, two, five, which it is great. So we can display this on our UI now. Um, I'll show it in the controls component. So this will be playback service dot tick interval. Okay, so this likely won't work. Not a number. Um, 
So this interval is based on the song tempo, but we're not yet passing the song into the service. So there's a couple of ways to do that. I think probably the cleanest way is in the song root that we, in the after model hook, we will set the song on the service. So after model, and it receives the model, which will be our song. We'll simply go this.set playback service dot song is equal to the model song and finally we'll inject a service into our root so this is the playback service that's ember dot inject service okay and you can see now that uh, this is showing the uh, number of milliseconds so if I go to, I might be wrong. It's got a BPM of 110, which uh, which means that the ticker interval is 136 milliseconds. And see if I switch between the songs here that um, the tick interval is indeed updating. Okay, so that's milliseconds. And I'll also just output the tempo of the song. Um, so that's the playbox service dot tempo. Uh, we don't yet have a computer property in here or a property for the tempo. It's on the song. Um, so I'll just alias it. So there we see our milliseconds and BPM. So the next thing we'll add is a play button unlike before we're going to test drive this play so uh, we will create a service we'll call service.play and we expect some things to happen so um, I guess we're going to need a uh, a boolean which will toggle to indicate if the song is playing so let's test that service.get is playing should be true and this will fail of course because there's no function called play playback service so let's create that And it's returning undefined, so this will set is playing true. It should make our test pass. Okay. So in the last episode, we added a tick count to the service, which uh, increments as the song is playing or will increment. Um, so when we play, I guess we want to set this back to zero again. So we want to assert that the tick count is zero. So when you press play, I think you can see this here if I run it here. Um, you can see it's in the middle of the song here. And if I click, click play, it goes from the start. It always starts from the start. So we want to uh, build that as well. Um, so I should probably set the service up uh, with a state where it's not at the beginning. So, so is playing will be false and uh, tick count will be 10 let's say and when we click play we want it to be playing and for the tick count to go back to zero so uh, i expect that to be failing which it is because we are not doing anything with uh, tick count at the moment so let's change this to set properties Playing is true and tick count is zero, which should get our test to pass, which it does. So let's also test drive a stop. Just copy this. So stop, and this time we want it to be playing. We'll put the tick count at 20 when we call stop. We expect is playing to be false and tick count 
think we probably want to leave it where it was. So yeah, you can see if I press stop, it's it just pauses where it was. So we expect that to be 20. But let's get this to, uh, let's take one test at a time. So this fails because we haven't implemented the stop method. And this should fail because we're not setting is playing to false. Okay. And we expect the tick count to be 20 and this should just pass. Cool. Okay, so when we click play, apart from uh, setting playing to true and set, putting us back to the start of the song, we want to kick off the heartbeat. So this is gonna be something like, we'll call a method called tick and what tick will do is it will, I guess, increment the tick count and then it will do a DM that run that later um, for the whatever the tick interval number of milliseconds is. This will continuously call tick. So it can be a little tricky testing with uh, run laters. So for the first set of tests, um, I'm going to mock out a couple of things and just assert that the right functions have been called and then come back to it be and see if we can actually make those tests better. So the first thing we'll do is we'll uh, assert that tick has been called. Um, so in order to do this, we want to mock out the tick function and assert that it has indeed be called. So I believe there is a add-on for Synon. So Ember Synon Q unit, okay. So this allows us to stub things out and then assert if they've been called or if they've been called with the right arguments, etc. So Ember install Ember Synon Q unit. Okay, so we want to uh, stub out the tick method and assert that it was called. Let's say we see how we do this. We need to import test from an Q unit, so like that. And this adds a this dot stub, so we can stub a method on an object. So in this case, we want to let let tick stub equal to this dot stub service tick. So this has now stubbed out the tick and we can assert, we can assert that the stub was called once. So we basically wanna do, okay, tick stub dot called once. Um, so I must have got something wrong here. Uh, yeah, I just copied and pasted this, so this should be Ember Beats. Okay, so that passes. Uh, let's actually make sure that fails by commenting that out. It's always nice to see a failing test, which it does. Okay, so um, we've now tested play. Um, I guess we can now test tick on its own. So um, play is going to call tick. Tick is going to increment the count. It'll then schedule tick to be called in the future again. So um, it's always going to be possible to press stop at any point. So tick could be called when we're playing or it could be called when we're stopped. So let's test drive the case where the uh, playback service in, is in the stopped state and a tick is uh, scheduled and then executed. So. So let's test drive tick when stopped. So as before, we'll create a service. Uh, we'll set some properties on it. So is playing as false. 
we'll set it a tick count at say four. Okay, so uh, we are gonna call service.tick and then we're gonna start a bunch of things. So, um, so we want to um, assert that the tick count isn't incremented. So, service, sorry. Service dot count is four. Okay, which passes. Um, we also want to assert that the run letter isn't called. Um, so let's create a stub equal to this dot stub. Ember dot run later. Um, run later stub dot not called. Okay. So this uh, fails because we are using Ember here and we haven't imported it yet. Okay, that all passes. So let's do the same for tick when playing. So we'll create a uh, set properties, but this time it's playing. We'll start at eight this time, we'll call tick we expect, first of all, this to be nine, which will fail. So um, this dot get is okay. Um, so that's a JS hint warning because I copied that in. Okay, so that passes and we're then going to do a run later in here, which we want to test first. So we're going to stub it and we're going to assert that the run later was not called. And this should... Um, sorry, of course that's, that's wrong. I just copied this from the test above. So when we're playing, we actually do want it to uh, be called. So we want it to be called once and we want to then verify. Um, so a run later scheduled, which should fail. So let's make this pass. So this is going to be amber run later, this, this, that, and it's going to call tick again. And, um, Third argument is the number of milliseconds between our number of milliseconds in the future when this function will be executed. And in our case, it's going to be the tick interval. So if there's a, uh, if it's a song of 60 BPM, that will mean the tick interval will be 250 milliseconds. So around about every 250 milliseconds, this function will be called. Um, Probably important to note that if you are in the business of actually building real audio software, you wouldn't uh, build it this way. I mean, um, Ember is great for building uh, ambitious web applications, but not for high fidelity audio uh, applications where timing is really important. Okay. So that passes. Um, so we also want to verify that it was called with um, the right arguments. So run later stub called with exactly. And it takes the arguments. So it's going to be take the service. Then it's going to be the function that it's going to run, which is going to be service.tick. I'm going to purposely put in the wrong 
milliseconds here, so we get a failing test for it. Um, it does fail. The the failure, the assertion description is pretty bad, so um, that's our fault. We should actually be adding some good descriptions for this. So uh, the run later leaves. Okay, that looks okay. So um, we actually expect this to be the tick interval, um, which isn't a hundred. Um, so we actually haven't set a song here, which is a mistake. Uh, we should be setting a song just like we're doing here. So for both of these, so this will take the song. Okay. So this should still fail in the same way because um, it's not receiving the correct arguments. For a song, as we saw before, with a tempo of 60, that means that the interval will be 250 milliseconds, which makes a pass. Cool. All right, so now that we have, um, we've actually built play and stop. I'm just going to move this up here so it's beside it. So now we have these play and stop uh, methods. Let's add some simple buttons. Um, the UI just to actually trigger these. Okay. Um, so our controls component. Uh, so we're just going to delegate these actions to the service. Um, there's obviously quite a bit of duplication here. I think there's likely a simple way of doing this in Ember and um, uh, whatever that way is. If, if there isn't, we'll, we'll invent it. If there is, we'll use it. Uh, we'll come back in a later episode and uh, refactor some of this, I think. But for now, uh, we should have a play button and you can see does indeed play and stop does indeed stop which is cool and i think we could probably even just switch the switch the song as we go and you can see it's it's playing um so this is 110 bpm you might notice that this is incrementing faster because the it's got a faster bpm cool so there's uh, something unsatisfying about these tests here especially when we have to stub uh, the methods. We're not, we're, I mean, we are testing a slice at a time, but I'm not really a, a fan of this style. Um, we kind of, we built it this way because it's actually quite hard to write tests where there are uh, run laters. Um, and mocking is quite often the way to solve it. Um, but uh, I think we can do a little better. Um, Here's something that I have been working on. It's something I use in uh, Intercom to test parts of our app. Uh, so it's some test helpers uh, for creating mock run laters. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the code now. I'm just gonna actually use it and uh, use it to write the test a little better. If you're interested in the code, just uh, leave a comment in the video and I'll be happy to, to send it to you. Um, what I might do over the next couple of weeks is uh, create a video and test drive this test helper itself and actually from first principles build it up so that uh, we can create an add-on i guess um so very briefly what this does is it's a test helper which allows you to mock the run later and you can either call um next on it which will uh one by one resolve whatever the next queued run later function is so you can step through those uh run laters or you can advance by a certain num num number of milliseconds. So if, uh, let's say we could um, create a, a playback service and set the tempo so that it, uh, the interval is 100 milliseconds, and we could press play and then we could go forward by 500 milliseconds. And uh, we would expect at that point that the tick count will have advanced by five because it would have 
uh, executed five of those uh, queued run layers. But for now, let's just copy this in. So it's a test helper and we're gonna call it mock run later. We're going to import it. So we're going to import mock run later and restore run later from Ember Beats tests helpers mock run later. So we're going to uh, write a new version of this test, which I think is much better. And we'll probably come back and delete that. So just for now, I'll call it um, pick when playing two. Okay, so uh, we're not going to stub anything out this time apart from the run later. So as before, we're going to Create the service, um, get rid of that for now. We're gonna set some properties. We're gonna play it as before. We're gonna call tick. So in order to do this, we'll call mock run later. Mock run later and pass in the current context. And this will have, it will then intercept any EM that run that later and queue them up and allow us to manipulate them. So this is actually gonna allow us to call uh, play and test that. So the reason we were testing tick here was so that we can uh, decompose those functions and mock out the parts that rely on em that run later. Um, but with this helper, it allows us to actually test the external API, the kind of things that we care about. So we're going to create a service, give it a song, call play, assert some things, go forward a certain number of milliseconds, assert some more things, and um, it's much higher level and better test. So um, I guess we're gonna, let's assert a couple of things before we actually call play. So assert equal, um, see, we're gonna probably get rid of quite a few of these uh, tests because they all have these stubs in them. Um, so really what, what do we wanna do? We want to create a service, give it a song, Insert some things, press play, uh, advance a couple of milliseconds, uh, check if it's playing, check its tick count, all of these things. Okay, so let's service dot tick interval is going to be for 60, it's going to be 250. And we have a JS hint warning for this, which we're not using yet. Um, Actually, let's use it. So this just removes the mock at the end because we're mocking a global uh, EM that run the later. Okay, so that passes. Um, so I guess we also want to uh, assert that the tick count is eight. Should pass, yep. We press play and when we press play, we what will happen, it will set the tick count back to zero, it'll set as playing to true. It will then call tick, which will increment the property and then schedule a run later. So everything up to uh, before the run later we should test. So I should actually make this false, right? So it's not playing, um, I'll, just for completeness. Uh, test some of these things. Okay, tick count is that. Press play. So the first thing we expect the tick count to, well, it'll go back to zero and it'll go forward one. So it should be one. So this should pass. It does. Um, what else is playing should be true. Which it is. Okay, so let's advance a certain number of milliseconds. So um, this is set on the context. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure of this exact API, but at the moment you call this that 
mocked run later dot advance milliseconds. So we know that the milliseconds is going to be 250. So if we go forward by 100, um, we don't expect the anything that was queued, the run later to actually um, execute. So the tick count should re remain at 1. which it does. And then if we advance 150, uh, that will be the 250 milliseconds, meaning that the queued up run later will execute. So we'd expect the tick count to be two, which it is. Um, so that's kind of how that API works. Um, I guess you can also go next instead, right? So this would be like, Instead of calling that, we would call next. So we just execute the next one, and that should fail, as, or that should pass as well. Um, so in this case, what do we care about? Probably we we do care about the number of milliseconds, right? So this is a useful test because it uh, shows that the thing is indeed queued and it's not at 100 milliseconds. Um, okay, so I think that's a good test. Okay, so let's advance another 250 milliseconds. And we'd expect this to be three. I'm actually gonna put it to four just so we can actually see it failing. So it's meant to be three and that will make it pass. Okay, and now let's call service.stop. And we expect um, is playing to be false and the tick count to be three. which it is. And then if we advance by 250 milliseconds, we don't expect um, the tick count to increment. So that should also be three, which it is. Okay, so uh, that is a much better test, I think, because it's t testing the outside uh, API um, than these tests, which are stubbing internal uh, methods and indeed like this doesn't even mention the tick method right so we're we're free to change the implementation the things that we actually care about is that there's a heartbeat and it uh, when you click play it's playing the tick count uh, increments um, so we'll as we build out the rest of the service we'll probably augment this um, test uh, but I'm going to delete these other tests because they're now no longer needed and we've got playing and stopping. Okay. Tick interval, yeah. Tick while playing, that's probably not a great uh, net description now for the test. Well, play and stop. Okay, so I think the final thing we'll do in this video is actually when we press play, I have these steps update so you can actually see what step is currently active. So we're currently simply incrementing the uh, tick count. I think really uh, what we want to do is, um, so we have a tick count, we want to update the model or tell the, ask the model to, based on this tick count, um, activate certain steps so that we can update the UI. Um, then we also want to ask the song to give us a list of sounds that are at that particular tick so that we can pass them to the song service to play them. So I think I'll call this play tick. And it will take the current tick count, which we will get from this increment property. So it will do something like song dot uh, set tick tick count um, get the notes and then do something like send service play notes something like that. So this song.set tick, uh, let's actually test drive that. So this is our song model. 
we have some tests here already. Um, test, this is going to be called dash tick. So we'll use 15 step as before. We're going to call song.set tick to be the first tick and then assert um, some things. So if you recall from previous videos, our object model is we have a song which has multiple channels and each channel has multiple steps. So when we set a tick, we want particular steps to activate and for all the others to not be active. So let's assert that. So when we set the tick, we want the first step of every channel to be active. So if I go song.get, channels the first one steps the first one and we call it is playing we expect that to be true so um okay i've got a couple of js hint warnings in playback service okay so that's incorrect and tick count is defined but never used Account here, so we haven't actually used this yet. So I'll just commentate that for a second. Okay, song set tick is not a function, which is what we expect because we haven't implemented yet. So the model dash tick. Okay, so uh, we, I guess we were just going to delegate this to each channel. So we're going to call this dot get channels. If we call invoke that tick tick count, and this will call a set tick method on each channel. Of course, our test still fails. So we want to implement a set tick method on the channels and just to get the test pass I'm going to set steps the first one is playing to be true which should make our test pass no it does not because we have another yes hint warning because we haven't used this yet Okay, that passes. So let's write a second test. So we expect this is playing to be false for the first one. So we're going to say in this step that the default for is playing is going to be false, which should make that pass. So now let's set the tick to be two and we expect these to flip. So the, the first step will be false, the second one will be true. And of course this will fail because we haven't really implemented yet. So. So when we press play, there is a counter that's incrementing the tick count. And you can see that it's, uh, we're basically going to mod by the number of steps that we have in a channel. And whatever the result of that is, will be the active step. So we get the steps. The current step index. The step that's currently playing is going to be um, tick count minus one because our tick counts aren't zero based or zero index, they start at one. I'm going to mod that by steps dot sent. So that is our current step and we're going to call step.set is playing to be true. 
Okay, so something fails there. Um, make this nice and simple for a second, and we'll zoom in on it. Okay, that passes. So this fails. Oh, okay. I bet you this passes. Okay, so we're simply not resetting the steps. So uh, really what we need to do is to set that all of the steps is playing to be false. So each time we set a tick, we'll set them all to false. And then the whatever the current step is, we'll set that to be playing. Okay, so that passes. So let's flesh this out a bit as well. I guess we want the channel one to be playing as well. Um, so this will be the second channel. We want the first step to be playing. The second step won't be playing. And for tick two. Okay, so this song is 15 steps. So I guess we're also interested uh, what happens on the very last tick and then the one beyond that. So if we actually have a look at that song. We'll see it's uh, so slightly weird timing. It's got uh, first three channels have got 10 steps and then the second or the last channel, the clap has got 20 steps. So we're kind of interested in this state here, um, which will be at 10 into it, right? So we set the tick to be 10 and we can assert a bunch of things. So we expect all of these to be false, um, but also we're interested in the first channel. We expect the last, um, step to be playing. Just comment out these for a second and see if they're a test pass, which they do. So I'm actually going to change this to be the last channel because that's the interesting one. So Okay, and if we go to the 11th tick, tick, we expect, so the first channel, it'll go back to the start. So the first one will be active, um, but not for the last one because uh, it will be, we expect the 10th one to be true. Which it is. Okay. So now I think we could update our UI. So we have a, a song template. We're currently just outputting the velocity for the step. So let's just also output that it's playing. And now when we press play, um, so I was expecting this to go through, uh, but they don't. So, um, so our play tick function does nothing at the moment. Really what we want to do is uh, call set tick on the song. So that should do it. And you can see here that it's is indeed setting it correctly. And uh, if we switch songs, you can see that it is, there's actual 15 step and you can see that it's working correctly. Um, so let's, up this, update this slightly. Um, let's just make this a little more noticeable. We'll set the style to be if step playing and the color is green. Uh, 
and it works. Uh, so thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll answer all of them. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.